You're with Newsmakers as we have a panel discussion on the Salvation Army's State of the Nation report. We are with Pam Sharp, Nikki Wagner and Glennis Cross. There has been a dramatic increase in the number of solo parent households in New Zealand and it's quite amazing the turnaround uh, in a decade. Uh, according to the Salvation Army figures, uh, 10 years ago we had 110,000 DPB households. That had dropped to 96,000 in 2007, but we're now back at 109,000. I suppose it is with a great sense of sadness that you've seen that huge turnaround in those figures, Glennis. Yes, um, there are certainly, a, 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 the largest group that come to us are solo parents, and they are desperate. <laughs> They only need to have a child get sick or a washing machine to break down and they're juggling between um, paying for food or power or taking a child to the doctor. And these women start to feel as if they're not very good mothers mm -hmm. and that pushes their self-esteem around and we're in a huge spiral. It would appear in the latter part of the decade, Nikki, um, the previous government was making some quite serious inroads into the DPB numbers. Mm. What are you going to do? Well, I think a lot of this is really um, looking at what's happening in terms of an international recession. And I think a lot of things have tightened up for people. Um, we've mentioned family support, that perhaps there was work somewhere else in the family that helped. Um, and we see that children of solo parents are worse, worse off. And we understand that intuitively because a, so, a family has sunk costs that cost depending on how many people live there. So if you're a solo parent with a family, you have to carry all those costs yourself. Mm. You've got no one to share them with and no one's income to share with your family. So it's, it's, it's understandable and it makes it more and more difficult for, for women. Of course, the government is planning to action its election commi mm. uh, commitments later this year. And there is this requirement in your manifesto that mm. solo parents um, are looking for work once their youngest child has turned six. Given the economic climate, is this feasible to proceed with? That's not quite right. They're in training or looking for work. All so right. they're getting in preparation for work or looking for work. And we have put it back simply because of the recession, because you're right, it's difficult to get work at the moment. But it underlines our belief that people are better off in work and that the only way out of the beneficiary trap is actually to be trained, to be educated, to take up a job when it's available. So when a child is six, the youngest child is six, there is time in the day that they um, don't have to look after their children, we want them to be in training or to try and get a job. How are you going to stop people though from deliberately circumventing whatever requirements you throw their way when their youngest turns six by simply having another kid? Well, that's their choice, of course, but hopefully people can see beyond that. If you're a solo parent with two or three children, the thought of another one on top of that when you're already struggling is pretty tough. We have over 40,000 DPB recipients at the moment whose youngest is six. Should they be dusting off their CV, Pam? Well, I don't think it's as easy as that. Mm -hmm. um, I think, and I don't think people have babies just to get a benefit. I think that's a myth. You know, I mean, I'm sure it happens every now and then, but in general, that wouldn't be your... Um, experience I haven't it? heard them say that. No, 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 <laughs> I, I don't think that happens. I mean, would you have a child to live, you know, in poverty? I don't think so. It's so, pretty tough there. Yeah, and it's fine to say people can get work, but, but when you're a single parent and you have, like, this four school terms now, what happens to those children in the holidays? You know, it's, it's not simple to just say, well, the mother can go back to work and the child's at school because finding jobs from um, nine to three is difficult too. It's a limited amount of jobs available. So, I but more it's... solo mums are in work than those that are on the DPB. So I suppose and maybe those... they have support, you know, from sure. families and um, friends who can help them with their children. Some people don't have that support. Mm -hmm. But do you agree with the government's overarching thrust that when your youngest turns six, you should be getting your mind around the idea of the workforce? Oh, I'm not opposed to it at all. No, I think it's, it's a good idea, but I don't think it, it can be enforced strictly just because of all the limitations, that's all. But I think it's, mm. it's great, in theory, yeah. It's okay. Good. Youth unemployment would appear to be a ticking time bomb. Uh, mm. The latest figures show that 26% of the 15 to 9-year-olds are on the dole. 
Where does this leave Nationals Youth Guarantee, which at the election pledged to ensure all teenagers would be at school, in training or work? Uh, that 16 to 17 year olds the youth guarantee was right, and the idea was that, these. the idea was that the youth guarantee was that if they couldn't cope with school mm. and they were grown out of school it wasn't offering them what they needed that they could go to the polytech or something like that with the youth guarantee but there's a bigger issue here because we've actually got uh, unemployment for young people up until their early 20s and the things that we've been working really hard on two particular schemes are job ops and Community Max and the kids that are getting into that scheme it's been quite successful. I met a woman um, just on the weekend who had a, a Community Max scheme with 12 young people in it and she took pains to tell me that these were youth at risk, young men that really were pretty difficult mm. and she's managed to get 10 of them into work out of 12. So it's getting them skills, um, teaching them to drive, giving them skills so that they can actually hold a job down because there is a lot of young people and when jobs get tight um, employers think well you know I'll take somebody in their 30s and 40s because they know how to get up and go to work. But when will the youth guarantee as stated at the election mm. actually be on it? Um, it started already and when will increased... it be on it? Well, I don't know what you mean by honoured. Well, to, when, terms... when have we got every 16 and 17 year old either at school and training or work? Mm -hmm. Well, I'd that hope was the as guarantee. soon as possible. You'll always be some that will fall through the cracks, obviously. But the idea is that they have an opportunity. Just because they don't suit school, they can go into training somewhere else and we'll pay for that. This, dare I say, is starting to sound like a pretty flimsy promise. Oh, I don't think so at all. Glennis, do you think this is an area that the government has under-delivered on? Well, we run a program called E+, and this year we've had to take some cuts in that, and we've had to lay some staff off <laughs> and keep trying to do what we used to do, and it is very difficult. And this was focused on this yes, age market? Yes, mm. yes. Well, why did you do that, Nikki? I don't know, I'm sorry, I don't know about that particular program, but I do know that we've put a lot more money into uh, jobs ops, that's been really successful, in fact um, I've seen kids out there um, getting jobs and being able to keep them in the long term, and I know we've put a lot of money into Community Max, which is getting young people into a social system, for example at the Marae or at the church, so that not only do they get a job, but they actually get a social framework support around them as well. Um, we've done lots of work with holiday <coughs> programs, there's been a huge amount of investment in this area but it's not an easy area when the jobs are contracting. Well why did you make the guarantee? Ah because we're going to deliver on it. When? As soon as possible. <laughs> All right we'll take a break more coming up do stay with us.